let's get in on another game. Falco Puff, we don't get too many of these. Now we're replaying on uh, FD, and this is a place where Puff's not gonna have anywhere to avoid our lasers. What are we gonna be looking for? At lower percent, we're gonna be primarily looking for um, spaced nair and back air. So Puff's gonna grab if we move in. And keep that in mind. So forward smash is going to cover just so much space by the edge there. Whoops. And again, this puff is doing something kind of interesting where they're trying to land coming down with pound. This is not too unusual, but the fact that this puff kind of wants to go for it a lot at low percent is a little bit unusual. They want to kind of avoid getting that extra damage on me. You can kind of see they're going for grabs whenever I come near them too. Um, the reason for this is because grab is going to help them a whole lot more at low percent, but they can get a kill just like that. Hopefully that makes some sense to you guys. Everyone really, you know, generally does know that. I'm going to laser turn the puff around. Oh, they went right around my jab. And they're going to actually roll there because they don't want to grab again, presumably. And you can see they whiffed, so they're going to go back to edge. Makes sense, right? We're gonna try and make them a little more uncertain about whether they can go to edge. Notice they come forward with that fair, right? And the weak fair right there. Um, weak fair is gonna be really good at kind of stopping my lasers from coming out, putting me in an awkward spot, and attacks on some nice damage too, right? So notice we dodge right back from this uh, fair. And we go back in. So now the puff's got some good damage. You're going to see a little bit less uh, back here coming out. Not that you saw a lot before. This puff really likes going to edge. So we're just going to laser that fair from edge. So it's very risky for the puff to kind of go through me like that. Like what you're seeing right there. And so we can kind of see we've faked going in. Go to that edge. Whoops, not quite close enough. <laughs> Percent was a little bit too high for that, so we are gonna just take our up throw and piece the puff out. I'll probably try and go, oh, they thought they were gonna try and go into me there, but they tried. They threw out a move first, that was good. So you can see when I miss my laser, the puff gets so much leeway to pressure me there. Now when I rolled backwards, I was actually not gonna be able to shield, I was gonna just go straight to edge. So that was good on the puff to pressure me out there. Yeah, this puff loves going to edge. Loves going to edge. I'm going to go ahead and DI out. DI out. That's how you avoid up throw, uh, up throw rest right there. And yeah, that's going to be it for that game against Puff. So again, we're mixing in when we go in with our grabs versus when we go in with our aerials. So the Puff can never be sure. Do I shield? Do I jump? We're lasering to take some extra damage on the Puff. We don't mind waiting here a little bit. This Puff clearly does not mind uh, taking the extra damage here. We got a little bit of a lag spike. Not sure what's going on with this uh, Puff's client, but we're just going to go back into these games now. I'm under a platform, which is going to allow me to dodge some of Puff's um, approaching attacks there. We're just going to go for a bit of a down throw cheese. It doesn't really work, but oh my goodness, we are getting uh, some pauses here, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this game may not be playable, but uh, <laughs> this is uh, truly heinous. And anyway, we're just going to keep trying to laser this puff, get our control on the ground. Hopefully not get up there arrested by this furiously wave dashing puff. No, I knew it. All right, thank goodness. Wait, are they pausing a bunch? Is that what they're doing? I wonder if that's what they're doing. <laughs> um, anyway, Orncraft, um, what's up? Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I think they might have been pausing. But anyway. Not quite enough to kill. Now we need a little bit more percent or a better starting position. Well, DI'd the first down our way really well, you could say, but then they were kind of in a tough spot. Oh, we're 
kind of just want to chase the puff down for a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and do so. So again, when I'm chasing the puff down, I'm not necessarily going in right away, right? I'm just making it like I could be going in, like uh, I could be going with a full hop, could be going in with a short hop. And then I could turn around and up tilt back here. Uh oh. And notice if I don't do my laser, um, how different this uh, matchup can be. And so that's going to be a tough spot coming out for that uh, puff. I think that I don't know if there were pauses or desyncs with our connection before, but either way, we did get it sorted out. So hopefully that makes some sense to you guys how some of that stuff works. We ended up showing you a mix up at the end where you're not always going in, but you're always keeping pressure on the puff. You're always right outside of her immediate attack range so you can threaten her. You're kind of playing against puff like she often plays against you where she is trying to wall you out, but she could go in. Falco is trying to laser puff out, wall her out with back air up tilt, but he could go in. He could do an approaching laser grab. He could be doing an approaching aerial and this sort of stuff where the puff is uncertain makes things much better for the falco it makes it more complicated for the puff where where does the falco go how does he get to punish his things like that and then when you do your up throw it's hard for the puff to react in time if she gets hit by any lasers she's usually going to get punished just because she can't di them super well and so we were able to kind of pressure the puff um in those sorts of ways and then go take her to a quick punish from there you can also kind of see with the puff's get up attack you can jump right over that with down air which you can't do on a lot of characters we're able to get a kill from there puff could have held down on the down air there of course but falco can chase that as well um and we also showed you a little bit how to DI up throw. We showed you what happens if you don't DI up throw. We showed that what happens if the percent changes. We showed that if, if Puff's going to chase you down, does she do an early area or does she do a later one? Will it affect how it works? Is it a constant hitbox like Nair where it stays out and can cover multiple different things? These are all things to kind of keep in mind while you are trying to play against Puff or even as Puff against uh, certain characters. So... Um, you also saw, I also talked a little bit about why Puff doing that early fair and hitting me, even though it didn't convert directly into a kill, threw me off and then gave her a good advantage. So sometimes with Puff, you have to remember getting incremental advantages can be very strong if it gets you a good position. So something that Falco has to kind of think of too, whether he has his laser out or not, his positions change a whole lot. Anyway, hopefully you guys think this game is interesting and thank you Sonics for playing. Oh my, another puff. Let's do it. Falco puff Yoshi story. This is going to be a good stage for Falco, but I almost got rested in the beginning. Um, that being said, we're going to try and laser to keep the puff down. Of course, they can get around that there. It makes sense. We're going to make sure we try to come down with our laser ambiguously. And uh, I didn't think that was going to kill. I just wanted to do it because it looked cool. Um, hadn't gone for a throw yet. We're going to just let puff deal with that. Oh, by the laser hit, I think we were okay. I think that might kill. So jab up smash can kill. Even though you're not fox, you can still use a fox type of punish sometimes. We're going to make sure we roll a little bit. Now that's going to be really important when we are... Oh, wow. They got that. Then they're going to have time. I'm just going to charge this. I wonder if they tried to rest me. Not sure. Anyway, Puff's sitting on the ground a lot, so we can laser a lot pretty freely. Then we can also, um... We can also just grab pretty freely. Oh, they went right under my move. That was weird. They're really good at... Their DI is really good. So, I'm not sure how much we can get off this throws. I was wondering if that was on purpose. So again, we're going to be getting... Because of this stage, we're going to be getting a lot of good kills here. Um, that you normally wouldn't get on a lot of others. So I need to be getting uh, these laser hits to get a conversion. <laughs> so Puff wanted to come in to challenge me on the ground. They stayed on the ground. I'm going for the up smash. Pretty risky. I could have lost the stock for that. Notice I'm um, staying on the platform and laser wing. Makes it very hard for Puff to come at the angle to attack me. Notice I'm back airing as soon as the Puff goes into the air, even though they haven't done that much this game. And the reason for that is because I'm always ready for Puff to attack at that specific angle so I can always counterattack them out of the air. Then we switching into Marth, which makes sense. We're going to be going in on Pokemon Stadium. We're going to have room for Marth to move around. Nair is going to be good. I did kind of guess that the Marth was going to be coming out of the air. As you guys can kind of see, they had good SDI on the Marth too. Not really surprising. We're going to delay our hit as much as possible so they're not able to grab the edge out of our uh, down here. And that's going to get our, get our kill here. Hit them so we can move away. We want to make sure we 
time our dare to absolutely edge cancel. They saw me going up before, so they're gonna get the punish out. We did not get our fast fall, so we're gonna have to reset. What do they do when we hit them with a few lasers? Oh. A little ambitious with our forward air. Need to go lower to get out. And that's gonna be a clean kill from them. So you can kind of see, because I missed an L cancel and then made a few other poor decisions, I was gonna get killed. That was good on Blank's part. Now we're gonna be going back in. I'm shooting mid lasers, it's gonna be much easier to power shield. I let them go low, not my best decision. Oh, a little bit late. Uh, that's a wall jump instead of a back air. We're just gonna go high. We notice we tech away so we can always have more stuff to come out. We always have more room to get something out. And again, look at that SDI. So they are gonna be able to live there. We're just gonna take our laser. Then we're gonna go back. Um, so I saw them covering me high. Now I'm moving away. Have my laser finally set up again. Avoided the invincibility. They got their power shield. I'm just Almost got them going onto the platform. Didn't really deserve to get that shine. Um, they did outplay my spacing there. So I was a little bit late on my uh, refresh. Saw they weren't, um, had the right idea. I'm not gonna let them grab the edge this time. Oh. Cross up the DI. And we're just gonna go for an early down air. Now, of course, we could have just stayed on the edge. We could have just messed with them like that. But, you know, sometimes you just wanna get make sure you get the kill and they might not be ready to tech. It's just kind of a mix-up you can do when you're invincible. Marth might not be early because he wants to get on stage. Didn't have any other options, so I thought we'd just go for it, get the kill. They were not able to tech because they were actually behind us, um, not touching the wall, so that worked out pretty well in our favor. But we also could have just grabbed the edge as a result of that. Anyway, so the Puff game, you saw they played really grounded, perhaps the Marth influence, we're not entirely sure. But we do know that we were able to laser them on the ground and space moves like down air and also just grab a little bit more effectively. You saw the puff had really good DI, so we weren't able to get the best conversions off of it. But occasionally when we um, were able to get some, we got really juicy ones off that. But still, we also put the puff in some awkward situations, uh, kind of regardless. We saw that when they started playing in the air a little more, we actually got our back here in a good position. We were able to get some good damage and then hit them more as a result of that. When you saw the Mars game, you saw that I was shooting a couple of lasers, then kind of waiting a moment, let them see if they get their power shields. You notice they weren't getting so many, partly because I was shooting such low lasers. They were also doing the crouch power shield method, which means if they're crouching and then they shield, it mainly works if the laser goes above Marth. If Marth is down here, the laser has to go above him for him to get the easier power shield. Because we were shooting low, he didn't really get any value out of that. They could have done dash power, power shield to get more value out of going for power shield so reliably, but if they were wrong then, um, they would be in trouble. Even if they were right, I can still shoot low ones and then I can go over them. So that's something that I was kind of playing around too. You kind of saw that if I made some mistakes in the punish game, I'd get reversed, and also the edge guard wasn't the strongest it could have been, so that was a bit of an issue for me. But you also saw that if I re-grabbed it, you know, the right time a little bit differently, then I could get some punishes as well. So you guys can adjust that a little bit in your mind, or you can just play a little more safer against Marth if you do hit him off the stage. You can kind of see what I was going for and try that out yourself in like an uncle punch save state and see how that works. But anyway, you saw that some grabs were working out. You saw that how I was pressuring the person. You saw that Nair was really good at catching him out of the air. You saw they wanted to stop jumping as a result. You saw that they were getting on a platform. How I was trying to catch them out of the air with a back air or something like that. And so you really get an idea of how the matchup should be flowing from Falco's end. Keeping the lasers out, make sure you're positioning yourself always right, like right outside of Marth's jab range and inside of Marth's jab range and making sure that he's like always putting up a shield. And then from there you go for grab or you can go for pressure. And you know, I'm always taking a moment before I hit him so Marth's shield goes down. So even if he does nothing, I still hit Marth coming out of shield. And if he rolls right away, I'm still punishing him too. Anyway, uh, GG's to blank. And hopefully that stuff makes sense to you guys. Try to give you a lot of good valuable information there because we got some good matchups.